Hi there, I'm Andy, and in this video we'll be exploring how to attack, detect, and defend against the abuse of Windows screensavers. Old cathode ray tube monitors suffered from permanent screen burn damage if the same image was displayed for a long period. So the screensaver was born, a constantly changing animation which would kick in if a machine was left unused for a certain time period. A screensaver on Windows is just a completely normal executable file, just with the file extension changed from .exe to .scr. Modern monitors don't typically suffer from screen burn, and the drive to save energy to protect our environment means it's now preferable to send a screen into a low power standby mode if the system isn't being used, rather than keep it turned on using energy just to show some pretty pictures. So although we rarely get to see the delights of bouncing text, random pipes, or flying toasters anymore, Windows still has a screensaver capability, and of course it can be abused by attackers. Similar to my previous video on default file associations, the abuse of the screensaver feature is an example of event-driven execution, basically running code whenever a certain event occurs. And in the case of screensavers, the event trigger is simply the lack of user activity for a given period. An attacker who has already gained initial access to a machine can abuse the screensaver functionality to establish persistence. They could either use the control panel GUI, or more likely, directly modify the registry under H key current user, control panel, desktop, setting screensave.exe to the path and file name of their malicious payload. Note that this can be any exe file, it doesn't even need to have a .scr extension. Screensave active to 1 to enable the screensaver, and screensave timeout to the number of seconds of inactivity before the screensaver should be started. In this example here, one minute. A minute later, the screensaver kicks in. In this case, it's a reverse shell back to an attacker controlled machine. But it could quite easily be any other malicious code. One neat advantage of running malware via this method is that there's a reasonable chance that the user is away from their machine, and therefore unlikely to spot any potentially strange behaviour caused by the malware. This camouflage can be increased further by setting the monitor power save function to a time period lower or equal to the screensaver time, causing it to power off. It's worth noting that Windows delegates accountability for terminating a screensaver to the screensaver itself. So, if a user re-engages with the desktop, Windows itself doesn't terminate the attacker's code. Also, note that this technique is accomplished by changing the registry values in H key current user. That means it's only effective for the currently logged on user, but that also no elevated permissions are required to pull it off. There's one other setting I didn't mention before, screensaver is secure. If set to zero, then Windows will not lock the machine when the screensaver is launched. This could be useful for an attacker who's planning on gaining physical access to a device and doesn't know the user's password. There's a few methods that could be used to detect this technique. Firstly, simply observing the registry values under H key current user, control panel, desktop gives a clear indication as to whether a screensaver is configured and what code will be run. Any obviously suspicious file names and paths should be investigated further. Autoruns, part of the sysinternal suite, is a great tool for identifying various persistence methods, and provides a graphical view of the same registry keys under its winlogon section. Of course, these methods are only really useful as part of an interactive investigation, so a more scalable solution is to use a registry monitoring solution to produce an alert whenever the screensaver configuration changes. I've covered this in a few other videos recently, so I won't repeat myself here. Go check out my video on default file associations at the 3 minute 55 mark for a walkthrough of this. Registry monitoring was already configured on the relevant keys before the attack demo, and so we can clearly see events in the security log detailing the malicious values.
One of the most effective ways to prevent attackers using this technique in an enterprise environment is to develop a group policy which overrules any local screensaver settings. Here I am defining a policy which forces the use of the ribbons screensaver to be triggered after one minute. Back on the workstation, we can see the previous attacker specified settings in the registry editor. The group policy update can be forced with GP update, although note that this doesn't alter the registry. Regardless, Windows now ignores the malicious registry values and instead honors the group policy configuration, and launches the benign screensaver after a brief period of inactivity. Another option is to use application execution control to simply block the ability of the system to launch .scr files, although this is of course of limited effectiveness because as we saw during the attack section, an attacker can just use a file with an exe extension. However, a more robust application control policy would be effective at limiting what code can run, regardless of whether it's launched by the abuse of the screensaver feature or by any other method. I covered this in a little more detail in my video on path interception at timecode 1039 if you want to check that out further. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to see dedicated videos on setting up some of these detection and defensive measures in more detail. But that about wraps up this video. If you found it useful, please do give it a like and consider subscribing if you want more of this sort of content. Drop a note in the comments if there's anything you think I missed around attacking, detecting and defending against the abuse of Windows screensavers, or if you have a good idea of what topic I should cover next. I'll see you next time.